This video is made for deck officers who are working on the tankers or scheduled to join soon. If you've made it through part two, there's no doubt that you're truly an amazing person. You are bound to be a successful person. Let's dive into part three. Ahem, let's get back to the main topic and discuss the vacuum condenser and steam ejector. The role of the vacuum condenser is to efficiently handle the continuous discharge of steam that exits the boiler, circulates through the COPT, and is then expelled through the exhaust line. Steam leaving the boiler not only has high pressure, but also moves at an extremely high velocity within the steam line. To handle the extremely high velocity of the moving steam, the idea was to attach an ejector to the condenser cooler to create a vacuum. By maintaining this vacuum pressure, it was expected to improve efficiency. This led to the development and installation of the vacuum condenser. All right, let's think about this. Imagine that when you blow air out of your mouth with a woo, it's like the steam being released from the COPT exhaust line. Now picture the vacuum condenser gently pulling all that steam in with a ho ooh smoothly and naturally absorbing both the pressure and velocity of the steam without any strain. On top of that, the condenser cooler is also doing its primary job, cooling. So we're getting an added benefit. It's like hitting two birds with one stone, isn't it? It's the perfect combination, efficient and effective. Now let's take a closer look at the steam ejector and ejector condenser, which are installed to maintain vacuum pressure. If you look at the small-sized ejector condenser, you'll see the steam ejector is mounted on top of it. On most ships, it's wrapped in insulation, so it's not immediately visible. Wow! Oh! Wait! Wait a second! Hold on! Stop for a moment! That last photo we just passed, the one with the five big holes, it looks like the inside of a vacuum condenser, doesn't it? What are those five holes for? Did you forget to explain them? If so, would you mind explaining what those five holes are for? Oh my god! Oh sorry, I totally forgot to explain. You idiot! <laughs> It looks like you were curious about those five holes, huh? That's a great question. Generally, on vessels equipped with steam-driven cargo pumps, you'll find three steam-driven cargo pumps and two ballast pumps. Now this setup can vary from ship to ship, but typically one of the ballast pumps is electric motor-driven pump, while the other is steam-driven pump. So the three cargo pump turbines and the steam-driven ballast pump all discharge high pressure, high velocity steam. This steam is directed into four of the intake ports, located on the upper section of the vacuum condenser, for cooling. As for the fifth hole, it serves a different purpose. When the steam main line reaches a certain set pressure, a dumping valve opens, releasing excess steam through a dumping line. That steam is also handled by the condenser through the fifth intake port. So, that's why you see five intake ports in the photo. The three in the center handle steam from the cargo pump turbines. The one on the left is for the ballast pump turbine. And the one on the far right deals with steam from the dumping valve when it opens. Yes, I see. Got all your questions answered now? All right then, let's move on. This is the manual provided on the ship. This part here is the steam ejector. And the section below it is called the ejector condenser. After passing through the ejector, the steam is cooled using the condenser transforming it back into condensate water. Since the condenser has a small capacity, if it happens to overflow, the excess water isn't significant, so it is simply discharged into the engine room bilge well. The water that is discharged into the bilge well is not reused. The COPT receives steam from the boiler, but the steam ejector also gets its driving steam separately through a dedicated steam line from the same boiler. When the ejector operates using steam, it creates a vacuum pressure at its suction section. As a result, the empty space inside, the vacuum condenser is influenced by the ejector's suction pressure, 
leading to the formation of vacuum pressure within the condenser. Let's take a moment to watch a video of an air ejector, or steam ejector, before continuing with the explanation. On board, the steam ejector is wrapped in insulation, making it difficult to see with the naked eye. That's why I prepared this video separately. The ejector you see in the video looks exactly the same as the one installed on the vessel, so please use it as a reference. Now let's go over the explanation again while looking at the photo. The driving steam is supplied from the left side and exits through the right discharge side. At the same time, the ejector suction section continuously draws air from inside the vacuum condenser. After completing its function, the steam passes through the ejector condenser, where it is cooled and converted back into water, which is then discharged into the bilge well. Since the amount of steam consumed by the steam ejector is not very large, if an overflow occurs, the water is simply discharged rather than being collected and recycled as boiler feed water. Now it's finally time to explain the vacuum condenser which is attached to the steam ejector like a parent and child. I've already explained it several times before, but let's go over it once more. When operating the COPT, if the steam discharge from COPT exhaust line were simply released, an enormous amount of boiler feed water would be required. To prevent this, the vacuum condenser was installed as a cooling device to recover and store the used steam, allowing it to be recycled as boiler feed water. When operating the COPT, the steam ejector is used to maintain the necessary vacuum pressure inside the vacuum condenser, allowing it to efficiently and safely handle the high pressure, high velocity, and large volume steam discharged from the COPT exhaust line. This system uses seawater for cooling, ensuring smooth and stable operation. When high temperature steam is cooled, it naturally condenses into after droplets, right? The water that flowed down inside the vacuum condenser is collected and stored separately in the hot well tank. Later, when additional boiler water is needed for the operating boiler, the recovered water from the vacuum condenser is reused. This diagram shows a condenser cooler designed with a double pass design. Depending on its design, a condenser cooler can also be made in a single pass configuration where the cooling water passes through only once, as the name suggests. Now let's continue with the explanation. Just imagine this. The system is currently in a vacuum state, and the cooling water enters through the pipeline at bottom section. It then circulates around the far water box before exiting through the cooling water outlet. Let's wrap this up here for now. Now, let's take a look inside the condenser. Do you see those countless small holes? Those are the tube where seawater flows through to provide cooling. As the cooling seawater passes through these tubes, it cools the high temperature steam flowing around the outside of the tubes. When the condenser is new, it looks as clean as in this photo. However, after long-term use, many of the tubes can become clogged with mud and marine organisms, as seen in this image. This significantly reduces the efficiency of the condenser cooler. In such cases, ship crew members may sometimes manually disassemble the condenser and clean the clogged tubes themselves. Alternatively, during dry dock periods, the maintenance work is often outsourced to a specialized company for through overhaul. Additionally, a pressure test is performed to check the condition of the tubes, if any leak or damaged tubes are found, but the number is within an acceptable limit. Instead of reducing them, they are simply plugged, as shown in the photo, and the condenser is put back into service. Oh my god! As you can see in this photo, when too many tubes are clogged, not only does the cooling efficiency decrease, but the condenser cooler also fails to lower the internal temperature to the desired level. This can slightly affect the formation of vacuum pressure inside the condenser. The vacuum condenser dose not rely solely on the performance of the steam ejector to maintain vacuum pressure. 
When high temperature steam is cooled, its large volume decrease as it condenses into water. Wouldn't this reduction in volume also cause a change in pressure? Therefore, we can assume that this volume reduction also plays a role in helping to maintain vacuum pressure. Now let's take a moment to imagine this together. The lower the cooling water temperature, and the faster the cooling water flows through the cooling tubes, the greater the impact on the internal pressure of the condenser. Therefore, when it comes to creating vacuum pressure inside the condenser, the temperature of the cooling water is something that cannot be ignored. That sound means we're wrapping up part three here. <laughs> All right then, let's take a look at the design capacity of the COPT and the vacuum condenser. Even if it was a bit tedious, I truly appreciate everyone who patiently watched and followed along until now. Much respect to all of you. To be continued in part four. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.